Hi everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining the class. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for joining the class. So we can wait for one more minute. Okay. Maybe others will join. Okay, uh, I'm sharing my screen. Is my screen visible now? Yes. Is my screen visible now? Oh, yes, Andrew. Okay. Uh, is everybody completed uh, this task? Student management system? Yeah, completed. Andrew. Okay, so uh, are you able to... Uh, are you able to populate the fields as per these device policies? Yes. Uh, any difficulties uh, are you facing here? There is no difficulty, Sanjay, but uh, I got some doubts with Sanjay. Okay. So uh, in our class, so I'm going to I'm going to create three these three web policies. Uh, you can check whether uh, you have created web policies, uh, how I'm creating here, okay? Yes. So here you can type student management system. Yes, I'm going to new button here. Yes, uh, this is my student management uh, system form. So I'm taking duplicate form and I will create a web policy. Configure. UI policies. I'm going to configure UI policies. Okay. New. First UI policies is if SSC is true, make following fields visible. Okay. If enter is true, make following fields visible. If BTEC is true, make following fields visible. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Here I'm saying make SSC fields visible. Okay, so here I'm here I'm saying make SSC fields visible. Okay, guys. So here you can see how I have written uh, this condition. Okay, so here I'm making SSC is true. If SSC true, or wait, wait. Uh, enter is true. Enter is true. Or B tech is true. So if any anything is true, SSC is true or BTEC is true or enter is true, I have to display SSC. 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 Yeah. yeah, I got it. No. <laughs> yes, so I'm clicking on new button here. So I will create a web policy action for SSC fields. Yes, SSC marks visible true. I'm submitting it. And I'm clicking on new button here. Yeah. SSC University. I'm making visible true. Okay. I'm submitting it. Now you can come and refresh here. You can see. So now SSC fields are not showing. So now I'm keeping it is showing SSC fields. Now I'm keeping enter. It is showing SSC fields. Now I'm keeping BTEC. It is showing SSC fields. Perfect. Next. I'm going to second UI policy. I'm taking duplicate window here. Okay. UI policy. Make interface is interface is okay. Yes. So here I'm saying so when interface need to dis we are displaying, you can see guys, 
if enter is true if btec is true we are displaying interface that's what here i am keeping enter is true or btec is true enter is true or btec is true okay then uh, we have to display intermediate fields saving it Next, I'm creating your policy action. Yes, intermox visible true. Next, I'm clicking on new button. Enter university. Visible to and submitting. Okay. Yes, we have written by policy for intermediate fields. You can pick here. So here you can see. for example, now I'm clicking on SSC. No, intermediate fields is not appearing. So if I'm clicking on enter, yes, it is appearing SSC fields interfields. So if I'm clicking on BTEC, it is appearing SSC fields and interfields. Next, I'm going to create a new UI policy for BTEC fields. Okay. Configure UI policies. Make BTEC fields visible. Make The tech fields visible. Okay, so when we are this, when we have to display B tech fields, if B tech is, if so B tech is true, then only we are displaying the B tech fields. Then only we are displaying the B tech fields. Yes. Now I'm keeping B tech is true. BTEC is true. I'm simply saving it. Okay. Yes, it is loading. Uh, you can click on new button. field name so here i'm saying btec marks visible true submit clicking on new button btec university btec university visible true Okay, I'm submitting it. Okay, yes, we have successfully created a web policy for B B tech marks. So I'm closing this. You can come and refresh here. Yes, now there is no fields appearing. For example, if I'm selecting SSC, yes, it is appearing only SSC fields. Now I'm selecting enter. Yes, it is appearing lower education details and intermediate details. Okay, that means SSC and enter. So if I'm selecting BTEC, yes, it is displaying SSC details, inter intermediate details, and BTEC details. For example, if I am removing intermediate, yes. So here it is showing all the details because of here highest education is BTEC. So all below education details also appear. For example, here I'm removing BTEC. Here you can see only ssc details are appearing here i'm selecting only intermediate you can see inter and ssc details appearing for example here i'm selecting btec yes it is appearing all the btec details and below education details so when i select ss when I, sorry when i select inter so when i remove btec it will show up to ssc and intermediate only everybody got it so how i i have i have written by policies yes 
is everybody followed same methodology or uh, you followed different me me mechanism please tell me guys yes first uh, first i created only with the sc inter and btech uh -huh, okay so you you have create uh, you mean you have created uh, and you have followed different mechanism right but uh, it won't work on the later by doing the modification only it get work okay so you can now you can create a web policies like this okay so first web policies make ssc fields visible visible if ssc is true r inter is true r b tech is true okay yes you have to do like this second way policy is make interfields visible if inter is true r b tech is true next third one make b tech fields visible if b tech is true everybody got it this example everybody got it this example these these are the these are the three web policies you have to make like this you have to make so you can say these are the conditions actually okay these are the conditions so if 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 we select ssc so we have to display only ssc fields if we select inter so we have to display ssc and inter fields if we select btech we have to display in ssc btech and inter okay these are the conditions so you you have to create a web policies in this manner okay got it everybody anji once open your form anji wait wait yes i'm opening the form then come and refresh here so however you can test so it will work out yes you you can tell me so as per uh yeah you can tell me i will select the fields as per your suggestion then you can check whether it is working fine or not yeah first yes. select btech field in btech yes i selected btech yeah now select enter field in. okay i selected enter field now remove the btech field okay okay but got in my but okay. in my instance i got when i select b first selected btech and later i selected intermediate means the fields are not uh, visible only yes so here you have to create a web policy always based upon the field okay so based upon the field you have to make a condition okay even uh, in yesterday class we done with issue management system right so for uh, for uh, uh, for web policy 11 and 12 so we measured the uh, another web policies uh, within that example right i think seven yeah. and okay like that so based upon the field we have to make the condition okay you you don't require to use uh, same field multiple times in the web policies if we use like that it it won't work out okay got it yeah. okay fine so next so i hope i uh, so i have to uh, discuss few things here student marks as i have explained next clear value if i policy example yes i have to explain this and we'll see this example once okay yes i'm saving it so here for this example i'm going to my parent my parent table okay yes so i'm clicking on new button 
So here, uh, whenever I'm selecting name Anji, so here you can see, guys. Whenever I'm select, uh, whenever I'm modifying the name, whenever, whenever I'm modifying the name, I want to auto populate or I want to clear the value of manager. One minute, guys. First of all, I will frame the web policy here. Okay. Wait. Yes. Yes. If name field contains some value, if name field contains some value, okay, I want to make manager field visible. Make manager field visible. Got it, everybody? Yes or no? If name contains some value, make, make manager visible. Everybody got it, this, this UI policy? What is the number of this UI policy? Seven, right? No, no, this one. Eight. Eight. Okay, got it, everybody? So everybody got it, this UI policy, what I have to do? If name contains some value, I have to display manager. Otherwise, I don't want to display manager. Okay? Yes. I'm keeping this way policy here. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to take duplicate and uh, I'm configuring UI policy here. I'm going to UI policies here. New. So all these UI policies are active files, I hope. Okay. So paste it. No. Simply, I will copy this one. Copy it, saving it. Okay, as so I'm pasting here. So here the condition is name is not empty. Okay, name is not empty. Name is not empty, and I'm saving it. Name is not empty, and I'm saving it. Next. So we can scroll down. So I'm clicking on UI policy action. If name is not empty, I want to make visible manager. Okay. So here I'm selecting manager visible to. I'm making visible to. And I'm submitting it. I'm submitting it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now you can come and refresh here. You can see how it looks like. Yes. Now there is no manager. So now I'm keeping manager name is Anji. Now I'm keeping manager name is Anji. I'm keeping manager is Apple Total, for example. Okay. Now I'm saving this record. Okay. Yes, perfect. Okay. If I when I select a, when I kept some value in name field, manager is auto populated, and I kept some value in the manager field, and I have saved the record. Now I'm removing the name uh, data in the name field. Now I'm planning to keep name is Ravi. What happening? So still manager showing the value or not. Now manager is visible and value, whatever the value we have given previously, it is appearing. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Everybody got this. Yes, sir. Okay. So this ability tutor was previously added when name is Anji. But when I change the value here, I don't want uh, manager value here. I want to clear manager value also. Okay. Got it? Yes. For that, you can go to this UI policy action. You can keep clear value true. Okay. Clear the field value. Whenever the value changed. Okay. Clear the field value. And I am updating it. Clear the field value. I am updating it. You can come and refresh here. Now you can see how it looks like. Yes. Now I'm going to a new record here. So here I'm saying again Anji. Okay, here I'm selecting manager is Abil Total. Perfect. I'm saving the record. Okay. Yes. So here you can see what happening here. The manager value is cleared because of uh, so this will also execute on the onload, right? That's why it is uh, the data is modified here. It's okay, fine. Now, name is Anji. Manager is double total. Now, we can see I'm removing the name here. 
okay now i am keeping the different name you can see now manager value will clear automatically cleared or not yes or no previously it is not clear everybody got it yes sir yes. okay so this is about a clear a clear field value option in the ui policy actions okay clear clear the field value option in the ui policies actions okay everybody got it yes perfect next so i hope i have covered everything with ui policies so we have the only pending thing is we have to discuss about a difference between ui policies and client scripts difference between ui policies and data policies yes we can discuss first of all now i am going to data policies concept once if data policies concept is completed we can come back to the a uh, difference between if web policies and data policies difference between if web policies and client scripts okay yes uh, any queries with if web policies here yes no no okay fine perfect mm, one minute why again it came to see yeah next data policies data policies so basically data policies are similar to ui policies okay data policies are similar to ui policies ui policies works on the client client browser you can say data policies works on a server side programming and it works on data it works on data got it everybody yes data policies will work works, for, works on a server side and it works on a data yes we will note down the definition of data policies first of all yes so you can see data policies enable you to enforce data consistency by setting mandatory and read only states for the fields okay so by using data policies we can only keep mandatory and read only so we don't have option for visible so for data we can't say visible or hidden right so that's why we don't have that option here data policies enable you to enforce data consistency by setting mandatory and read only states for the fields okay this is the definition i'm copy pasting the definition here next you can see data policies are similar to ui policies but ui policies only apply to data entered on a form through the standard browser data policies can apply rules to all data entered into the system including data bought in through import sets or web services and data entered through the mobile ui okay so wherever you will import the data into the system wherever you can import the data into the system data policies will apply okay so when you web policies will apply data entering onto the form then only web policies will apply i hope everybody got it the difference between web policy and data policy here okay yes yes i am also copying uh, this url you can go to this url you can learn more about the data policies okay perfect now i am going to navigation I'm closing all the tabs so here you can type data policies under system policy we have rules under rules we have data policies okay i will write navigation under system policy we have rules under rules we have data policies okay yes data policies table name is sys underscore data underscore policy underscore 
sorry, policy two. This underscore data underscore policy two. This is the data policy table name. Okay. Yes. Now I'm saving it. Now I'm saving it. So we can create a one new data policy. One new data policy. So I'm planning to create a data policy on. I'm planning to create a data policy on my parent table only. First of all, I'm going to my parent table. First of all, I'm going to my parent table. I will re I will deactivate all the eBay policies. Okay, configure eBay policies. First of all, I'm deactivating all the eBay policies here. Okay. Uh, where is uh, active field here? I think we don't have one. <laughs> one minute, guys. I'm bringing uh, active fields to here. Otherwise, I will delete all the eBay policies here. No problem. Okay. Uh, so, yes. So, here you can see this eBay policy is active and this eBay policy is active. So, I'm close. I'm making, uh, I'm making it false. Okay. Now, every, everybody got it. On my parent table, all the eBay policies are in active false. Yes or no? Yes. Now, no eBay policy will work on my parent table because of we deactivated all the eBay policies here. Now, you can again, you can go to the my parent table and you can see, you can see here, you can go to the new form and you can see any eBay policy applying here. Tell me, guys. Any web policy applying here? No, it is not applying any web policy. Okay. Got it? Yes, sir. No. Yes, Sanjay. Okay, fine. And forever, forever understanding purpose, I am also deleting all the data if web policies here. Otherwise, you, you will confuse. That's why, first of all, I will uh, export to XML. And after my data policies explanation, I will again import this, no problem. So first of all, I'm deleting all the eBay policies under my parent table, okay? Yes. Now you can see. So there is no eBay policy on my parent table now. Yes or no? There is no eBay policy on my parent table. Even, even there is no uh, active false eBay policies also not there, okay? I have deleted everything. Fine. Now you can come here. I'm planning to create a data policy. For example, I'm going to configure data policy. Yes, I'm going to data policy here. So my first data policy is make number field read only and name mandatory. Okay, got it, everybody. Otherwise, we can keep something different. Instead of num number, uh, I will say email. Uh, wait, yes, email. Make email field read only and name mandatory. Got it, everybody? Yes or no? Yes. I'm saving it. Now you can come here. So I'm going to create a one new data policy here. You can see the data policy form, how it looks like. Yes, data policy applies on import sets. It applies on SOAP, applies as UI policy on a client. Okay, we can note down this. Data policy, I will note down our top to here. Data policy. P-O-L-I-C-Y, applies on first one, import sets, set, second one, apply to import sets, apply to import sets, second one is apply to SOAP. Third one. Use as UI policy on client. Use as UI policy on client. Okay. Yes. 
and we have uh, these options uh, reversive false inherit you you already know about these two options okay we already discussed with you policy i'm not i'm not note down here yes i'm keeping uh, my data policy here make email field read only and name mandatory and i'm saving it okay perfect here we have only two options so read only and mandatory okay yes i'm keeping here so data policy rules i'm note down in the data policy rules here data privacy rules so what are they mandatory and read only i'm clicking on new button here you can see read only and mandatory okay read only second one is mandatory next data policy rules choice value data policy rules choice values choice values first one is true second one is false sorry third one is leave alone l e a l e a v e leave alone okay these are the data policy rules choice values okay perfect now you can come here so email read only yes email i'm making read only i'm making true so submitting it yes next name mandatory name mandatory to submit it now you can see so i have successfully created data policy here my data policy is make email field read only and name mandatory you can come to my parent table and you can check so whether data policy is applied or not yes you can see guys so data policy is applied or not yes or no yes only. so how are you saying uh, data policy is applied so on which basis you are saying data policy is applied tell me yeah yeah as of now we can't say rightly but yes, here exactly. the email field so here you can see here name is mandatory email is read only there may be a chance of make name field mandatory and email read only by using if i policy also right yeah yes, no. but it is apply i am saying applying data policy why because of we don't have any web policies written on my parent table as of now now for the class for the confirmation you can go to the my parent table list view okay so here you can see you can see uh, you can read the definition of data policies data policies enable you to enforce data consistency by setting mandatory and read only states for fields okay and here you can see data policies can apply rules to all data entered into the system including data brought in through import sites or web services and data entered through the mobile ui wherever you enter the data so data policies will apply okay yes first of all we will check in the list view so i am trying name field is a mandatory field uh, we kept uh, uh, name field is mandatory by using data policy now i am planning to remove uh, this name name value in the name field here you can see what happening what happening here you can see it, it won't uh, deleted any no as yeah. We use. yeah it is not removing it is not accepting the removing of name yeah. value okay it is not accepting removing of name value okay now i am trying to keep email field now i am trying to uh, add the email field maybe i am saying anji@gmail.com you can see 
now it will throw an error data policy error you you know that it email field is a read only field we are trying to enter data it won't accept you can see it thrown error or not so you can see so name field is a mandatory field you are trying to remove the data email field is a read only field you are trying to enter the data we are getting errors or not yes perfect we are getting errors and if we go to the my parent form if we go to the my parent form it is apply it is showing name name mandatory symbol here email read only symbol here why because of so here you can see in, in the data policy we can use as UI policy and client for example now i am removing it and i'm saving this data policy now it won't show name mandatory and email read only on the form okay yes now i'm going to the where is my parent form you can come and refresh here so you can see for name field there is no mandatory for email there is no read only okay but but i am trying to enter data into the ng ng uh, sorry email field here from the form now i am planning to submit this my parent record with empty name field it it, it will throw and two errors here you can see it won't accept is it accepting here tell me guys no, data policy supplied or not yes sir but we are not showing uh, the data policy uh, same as UI policy here. Got it? We remove this option. That's why the asterisk symbol or read only symbol are not appearing. Got it, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Again, I'm keeping this one. Again, I'm keeping this one. Okay. Yes. Yes. This one example is fine. This one example is fine for explaining the read only and mandatory. Okay. So you, you know that so data policies are similar to the web policies based upon the condition how to make fields mandatory or read only. Okay. Yes. Now here there is no web policies on my parent table. Perfect. Yes. I have created, I have created data policy. Perfect. Now I am going to one import set example also. I am going to one import set example also. Okay. Yes, here I have to explain one import set example also. For that, I'm deleting the data. For that, I'm deleting the data. Okay. Yes. Wait. Wait. Uh, delete. Yes, in my parent, uh, in my parent table, there is no data now. Now I'm going to my parent data Excel sheet. My parent demo data Excel sheet here okay uh here i'm planning to keep uh, wait wait i'm planning to keep column names same as uh, table names as of now okay uh maybe here it is name uh here it is uh, gender here it is email here it is manager okay perfect i'm saving it now I'm going to data sources here. Yes, you have to say answer. So I will ask one question here. Please observe one thing here. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to my parent data source one. Okay. My parent data source one. So I'm removing this Excel sheet. Okay. I'm removing this Excel sheet. Yes, I'm closing this one. First of all, I will remove this Excel sheet. So I'm attaching my re latest Excel sheet here, okay? Wait, it's loading. Wait, guys, it's loading. Yes, choose files. Desktop, mm, my parent demo data. Yes, this is Excel file, okay? Excel work worksheet, I'm selecting this one. So we already transform map created in previous classes. You know that you already, you know that field mapping is also done. Now I'm simply loading all the records here. Now I'm simply loading all the records here. Never. So I'm running the transform. Now tell me guys, one minute, one minute. Now I'm running the transform here. Now I'm running the transform. Transform, yes. Now you tell me guys, how many records inserted into the my parent table? So I'm opening this Excel sheet also. How many records insert into my parent table? Based upon this data, you can tell me. 
yes please analyze the, you can apply data policy also here you have to apply data policy to my parent table also while importing the data okay i think no data will be uploaded perfect there is no data inserted inserted into my parent table yes you can see the transform history all are skipped or error yes we, we here we have four errors we can check what are those four errors here So you can see data policy exception, the following fields are read only. Data policy exception, the following fields are read only. Data policy exception, the following fields are read only. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yes, we got data policy exception and there is no data inserted. Even you can come to the my parent table and there is no data inserted. Yes. Yes, I got uh, some issue uh, with this email field. Now I don't want to keep this email data in this Excel sheet. I'm removing it. Wait one minute. Uh, I don't want this email data here. That's why I'm removed here. I don't want this email data. After, along with this, I am also removing uh, one name field here. One name, one name also I'm removing. Angie name also I'm removing. Okay. Now I'm saving this Excel sheet. I'm saving this Excel sheet. Again, I will go to the data source and I will try to import the data. Okay, you can see what happens. I'm closing this one also. Yes, uh, my parent data source one. So first of all, I will download this Excel sheet, guys. Again, I want this Excel sheet with the uh, overall data. One minute. I'm clicking on attachment icon. Yes, download all. Yes, I downloaded this Excel file. Now I'm removing it. Okay. Now I'm attaching my latest attachment. So my parent demo data, Excel sheet. Yes, I attach. So you already know field mappings and all completed. Now I'm loading the all the records. So four record, four records are inserted into the staging table. Now I'm running transform map here. Now I'm transforming data. Okay. Now I'm transforming data. Now I'm transforming data to my parent table from the staging table. Yes. Now tell me how many records inserted uh, into the my parent table. How many records skip? Three are records are inserted. Okay. Which record I'm is not, not uh, created uh, uh, in my parent table? Which record? Yeah, come again. I'm sorry. Which record is not created in my parent table? Why? Yeah, first because? record and the ability to turn. Yes. Why? Yeah. Because. Why? Because there is no field name field. Yes. No, so in the data no, policy, data policy we have yeah, we have name is that. mandatory. Name is mandatory. But here we are sending name is empty. Okay. But here empty. we are sending name is empty. Okay. That's why that record is not created. Yes. You can see the transform history. Three records inserted. One error. We can see that error. We can see that error. Yes. Here you can see data policy exception. The following fields are mandatory name. Okay. Now we can come to the my parent table and here you can see three only three records inserted. Yes, my explanation is completed. Now I'm deleting this data. Now I'm deleting this data. Okay. Yes. Delete. Now I'm closing this. I'm closing this. I'm closing this. Yes. Now we can come to the data policy. Here you can see apply to import sets. I'm removing apply to import sets. I'm saving it. Okay. Now I have removed apply to. Now I have removed apply to import sets option here in the data policy. Now again, I'm going to data pol sorry, the data source. Okay. So wait, wait. So one minute. So in my uh, sorry guys so you can see i'm going to downloads yes it contains data i'm copying this and pasting to my desktop. Yes, maybe it will. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait. 
cancel yeah okay so it's okay fine i'm i'm i i have existing file right so maybe i will try it. no control z also not accepting wait i will keep data again here okay i will create anji at the rate of gmail.com next anusha at the rate of gmail.com next janaki at the rate of gmail.com next venkat at the rate of gmail.com okay yes i'm saving it i'm saving it so i'm closing it yes you, you know you, you you have seen here we have overall four records data there is no email empty there is no name so there is no data so we don't like that so name is empty there is no like that okay name contains all the data email also contains all the data okay yes i'm closing this file so i will attach this file to this data source and you can keep remember so in the data policy we removed apply to import sets option okay yes you can keep remember that one yes now i'm attaching my file here okay my parent demo data this one this is the excel sheet close now load all the cards run transform transform now tell me guys how many records uh, inserted into my parent table all records will be inserted in. perfect all the fields will be inserted into my parent table why because so even email field is read only email field is read only yes. still we are sending the data again again still it is accepting the import because of we removed the apply to import sets false here okay now here you can see we have core records wait wait yes got it everybody okay these are the few examples uh, on import sets with the data policies okay got it everybody sr no again i'm keeping apply to import sets here i'm saving it yes i'm removing data source related files from here yes i don't want this one also so for example yes we have created data policy after some time client come to us and he informed us so we we don't require to create a data policy on this you can convert this data policy to a web policy okay you can convert this data policy to a web policy yes here we have link convert this to a web policy convert this to a web policy one minute this data policy is deactivated this data policy is deactivated and it is created new web policy created or not new web policy from the data policy tell me guys yes sir we, we it is created new web web policy. Policy. yes even here you can come and here you can see web policy is there now if we go to the data policy you can see we have data policy with active false okay so i'm going to data policy uh, yes data policy active false everybody seeing here yes for example in your organization in your organization you have created one ui policy the client came to us and he informed so we don't require this ui policy you can convert this ui policy to data policy okay yes you can simply click and convert this to data policy this ui policy will deactivate and new data policy will be created okay got it everybody created or not new data policy yes created you can come to the data policies and you can refresh so we have new data policy with active true yes or no yes if we go to the ui policy this ui policy is deactivated because of we have converted this to data policy okay everybody got it converting a data policy to web policy web policy to data policy yes or no yes sir okay perfect yes finally this is about data policies 
Now we are going to see the difference between data policy versus UI policy, UI policy versus client scripts. Okay, I already have written somewhere. So for that data, I'm checking. First of all, wait for some time. So somewhere I mentioned URLs. Why we have not this one? Wait, wait, wait. Yes. When we discuss what you have policies, and there you have written. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm saying that when we are discussed about UI policies, you have said the differences. Yeah, yes, sir. So I have only written uh, UI policy related uh, differences at that time. We, we won't discuss about the difference between uh, UI policies and client scripts, the difference between uh, UI policies and data policies. Okay, now we are going to discuss. First of all, I will note down all the data policy related points also here. Okay, before going to differences. Wait, wait for one minute. Uh, I'm checking uh, those data from previous batch data. Mm, I'm going to home. Wait. So, UI policies concept is very, very important concept, okay? UI policies concept is very, very important concept. So, uh, around with UI policies, they will also ask questions on data policies, okay? Based upon the UI policies, they will also ask about the data policies also. And the difference between UI policies and data policies, the difference between... So the data policy differences are note down in here, okay? So you can see. So data policies will execute based upon the field values. Data policies will execute on, uh, execute on the form save or submit. UI policies will not execute on form submit or save, okay? So data policies will execute on form field value change, form field value change, okay? Data policies will have set field mandatory attribute and set read only attributes, okay? So data policies don't have set feasible attribute. Data policies will set field attributes with no scripting, yes. In the data policies, we will not, we will not use any scripting, okay? Data policies will not execute scripts for advanced logic, okay? These are the uh, few different, uh, few uh, data policies related fields. First of all, here we'll see the difference between UI policies and client scripts. Okay, I'm copying uh, this URL. In interviews, they will ask this question, guys. Without any of these two questions, without any of these two questions, we don't have any interview, I feel. Okay, so very, very important. What is the difference between UI policies and data policies? What is the difference between UI policies and client scripts? It's a very, very important concept. Here you can see. First, we will see difference between UI policies and client scripts. You can see uh, criteria, client script, and UI policy. So, execute on a form load. Yes, client script will execute on a form load. UI policy also will execute on a form load. Okay. Uh, execute on form, save, submit, and update. Client script will execute on form, submit, but UI policy will not execute on form, submit. Execute on form field value change. Yes, client script and UI policy both will execute on field value change. Have access to fields old values. If it is a client script, we have field old values, access to field old values. In the UI policies, we don't have access to field old values. Okay. So client scripts uh, execute after client scripts. No, client scripts will execute first. Client scripts will execute first. After client scripts, UI policies will execute. After client scripts, UI policies will execute. Okay. Next. Uh, you uh, compare with client scripts, UI policies will execute faster. Compare with client scripts, UI policies will execute faster. We don't have that point here. Okay. But it is very, very important point. So UI policies will execute faster than client scripts. Faster than client scripts. Okay. But client scripts will execute first. UI policies will execute after client scripts. Set field attributes with no scripting. No. Uh, so we, in the client space, we'll use scripting. 
yes we can able to make uh attri we can able to make uh, field attributes by using giveaway policy but by using client scripts without scripting we can't do anything okay required control over order of execution yes in the giveaway policies and client scripts both will follow the order of execution order of execution means sequence if we have our if we go to the giveaway policy or client script we have order field uh, order 100 200 like that so based upon the order you have given it will execute okay A any queries here the difference between web policies and client scripts no okay A everybody right right no queries okay fine next i'm going to uh, difference between UI policy and data policy next i'm going to difference between UI policy and data policy i'm saving it oh my god yeah UI is better yes you can see here so both data policies and web policies enforce data consistency by setting field attributes based upon conditions. Data policies execute server side logic, web policies execute client side logic. When, de when developing an application, which type of policy should be a developer use? Use this table to determine which type of policy to use. Okay. Yes. Criteria execute based upon field values. Yes, data policies and UI policies will both execute both based upon the field values. Okay, execute on form submit or save update. Yes, data policies will execute on form submit, but UI policies not execute on the form submit. Execute on form field value change. Yes, data policy and UI policy both will execute on form field value change. Okay, set field mandatory attribute. Yes, in UI policy and data policy, you can make set, attribute, set mandatory attribute. So set field read only attribute. Yes, we can make read only attribute in data policy and UI policy both. Set field visible attribute. In the data policy, we don't have set visible attribute because of we are applying data policies to the data. That's why we don't have visible set visible attribute. We don't have. Okay, in the UI policies, we have set visible attribute also. Next, set field attributes with no scripting. Okay. In the data policies, we will not, uh, yes, we can able to keep uh, data policies, uh, set field attributes with no scripting. Yes, we can able to uh, make field attributes without scripting in data policies and UI policies. Okay. So, execute script for the advanced logic. In the data policies, we don't have any scripting part. If it is a UI policy, yes, we can able to use the scripting in UI policies. Okay. So you can see uh, these differences for one, one minute. So you have any queries, please let me know. Uh, yes, guys. So if anybody have queries uh, with the difference between a uh, client script and UI policy, UI policy and data policy. Yes, if you have any queries, please let me know. We will discuss. Field attributes and yes, what it indicates. Field attributes, field attributes are Sorry. mandatory, read only visible. Okay, yeah, okay. got it. Like the functionality of the field we are deciding, yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. okay uh, in the interviews, they will ask uh, what are the field attributes. So, in interviews, they will ask one question what are the field attributes? read only mandatory visible display unique okay whatever the choice choice uh, whatever the things you are able to see in the configuration dictionary form those are all the uh, dictionary attributes sorry uh, those all are the field attributes okay 
got it read only mandatory visible uh, unique queue next uh, display these all are the field attributes okay De uh, default value dependent calculated value those also field attributes only but in the UI policies or data policies we will use only these things mandatory read only visible okay yeah okay and i got it yes uh, any queries please let me know yes if no query is uh, i will close uh, this data policies and web policies concepts so in our syllabus we have small definitions also i'm going to syllabus once so we'll note down few few definitions okay in today class so in interviews they have asked a few definitions that's what i have mentioned here okay uh, for example intercept process so foundation data we will learn foundation data definition yes foundation data what is foundation data foundation data is a organized organizational data foundation data is a organizational data which contains uh, users info users roles groups companies locations call centers information okay yes, I, I will note down foundation data is a organizational data organizational data which contains users roles groups department company location cost center etc okay so this information uh, we are calling as foundation data any queries here so whatever the user administration data we have those those data comes under foundation data okay whatever the user administration user administration data we have that comes under foundation data or or we can say organizational data also somewhere i think in one interview they have asked this question that, that's why i have noted down here okay next next uh, i'm going for ess role i hope we we already written definition of ess role maybe yeah. Okay, yes. we already written ESS role definition. Elevated role definition also we have written, right? Yes or no? Yes, elevated role definition also we have written uh, while explaining the roles concept. So you can see, yes, elevated privileged role. Okay, yes, we also done with uh, this role. A role, elevated privileged role, a role that requires elevated privilege prevents the system from assigning it to a user at login guys if we assign uh, any elevated role to the user if the user logging into the system that role will not apply we have to apply that elevated role manually okay yes sir okay for example elevated role is security underscore admin role okay uh, we will use this role while explaining the acl concepts okay yes next so I will mark in green color. So whatever the things I have completed. One minute foundation data. I'm keeping in green color. Yes, it's four. Keeping in green color. Elevated low. Keeping in green color. Next domain separation. Next domain separation also I'm keeping in green color. Yes, what is domain separation? In interviews, they will ask. Wait. C O M A I N domain separation. So basically, uh, so domain separation will separate the businesses. Domain separation will be, uh, separate the business or will separate the data as per the business okay for example for example we have reliance industries for example we have reliance industries if we go to the reliance industries 
reliance industries in, in different uh, business businesses okay so maybe networking business we have networking business we have groceries business we have petrol oil, oil related business we have gas related business uh, we have uh, cloths uh, reliance trends right so we have clothing related uh, textile business we have footwear business okay okay so we have reliance running multiple businesses okay so for example if reliance takes service from instance reliance takes service from instance uh, they will utilize that service from instance to keep all these data yes or no in one reliance service from instance we are keeping all businesses related data okay so if we do the if we do the day domain separation if we do the domain separation for that reliance service now instance okay as per their businesses okay and here you can see before uh, doing the domain separation for uh, that reliance businesses so uh, network related data gas related uh, gas related department persons will able to see within the organization maybe footwear footwear related data okay uh, uh, textile related persons able to see data okay oil related data gas related uh, persons uh, within this organization able to see the data yes or no everybody in the organization able to see all the business information yes or no all the business all the different types of businesses information okay yes, okay if we if we if we do the domain separation for this kind, uh, domain separation for this kind of service now instances okay uh, so footwear business related persons only see the footwear related data network related people within the organization able to see only network related data within the service now instance okay uh, so textiles related data only textile textile related people will see within the organization got it everybody what domain separation yes or no Okay. okay fine we will note down the domain separation defini definition uh in interviews uh, they will ask have you done with the domain separation so guys as of now i didn't get chance to work with the domain separation okay but uh, the definition will tells us how it, it it works okay got it everybody so if we if we do the domain separation for service now instance the data will display as per the business as per the domain okay within the organization okay guys one minute what happens here one minute understanding domain separation and separate data wait wait okay okay maybe here we have No, here I'm not found this definition. You no, here also not found definition. Mm. So I'm opening developer URL. It's okay. No, guys, I didn't get any definition here as of now. So this definition is fine from the docs. Okay, but it is not opening proper URL, URL domain separation you can separate data process and administrative tasks into logically defined domains okay yes this is the definition of domain separation okay yes this is the domain separation domain separation you can separate data processes and administrative tasks into logically defined domains okay next next uh, plugins plugin so we can also discuss about plugin how to so basically uh, what is plugin what is plugin will not down plugin definition one minute one minute pl uj plugins plugins So plugins are the extra components of service now. Okay, extra features within the service now instance. 
uh, which is not get by default in the service now. Okay. Plugins are the extra components. PLUG plugin in service now. Okay. We'll see the definition. So you can see. One minute it's loading. So you can see plugins are the software software components that provide specific features and functionalities within a service now instance. Okay. Plugins are software components that provide specific features and functionalities within a service now instance. Okay. Plugins are software components that provide specific features and functionalities within a service now instance. Okay. So basically, plugins are the extra components which you will not get along with the default service now instance. Okay. You will not get with uh, service now instance by default. Okay. You have to pay the some amount to service now company and you have to bring these plugins. Okay. Yes. So what is the navigation for these plugins and how to install these plugins? So I'm copying this URL. For more information, you can go to this URL. Okay. I'm saving it. So I'm closing those tabs to write. Plugin. So under system definition, we have plugins. Under system definition, we have plugins. Under system definition, we have plugins. Okay. Yes. Plugins table name is sys underscore plugin, I hope. Okay. If we click if we click on plugins here, it will open the plugins uh, editor page. Okay. So we'll see the backend table name here. Whether it is correct or not, season script plugin dot list. I hope th this is the correct table name. Wait, it is loading. Wait, wait. wait still it's loading so basically within our service now instance we have many plugins that's why it will take no it, it the table name is not sys underscore plugin now i'm trying with sys underscore plugins plu yes the table name is plugins table name is sys underscore plugins okay yes i'm copying it uh, i'm pasting here okay so if, if you go to this path under system definition we have plugins if you go to this path will directly open the plugins related all the plugins here you can see almost we have 2209 plugins within the service now instance so few plugins already installed few plugins uh, not installed few plugins are the free plugins few are the paid plugins okay so for example we can see what are the installed plugins we have yes so you can see activity formatter activity stream we have many plugins maybe instant management problem management itsm all are installed okay now we don't have major instant management we have read the definition right major instant management it, along with instant management we discussed about major instant management definition or not yes so in our service now instance we don't have any major instant management you can see major okay we don't have anything uh, with ma major instant management now i'm going to install the major instant management plugin you can see may jor major instant management instant okay so you can see uh wait instant management major instant management okay major instant management so here it is instant management here in instant management it's already installed but Within the instant management, major instant management is not installed. Okay. We have to install separately. Now we can see I'm installing major instant management from here. So it is not installed. Now I'm clicking on install. Okay. Yes. Wait, it's loading. So if you are trying to install a major instant management along with the major instant management, all this should be. Uh, this will be uh, instant communication management also will automatically come. If you want some demo data for the major instant management, while guys, while installing the plugin, while installing the plugin, if you want some demo data, 
you can click on load demo data now i am activating this plugin you can see now i am activating major incident management plugin okay so in within the class you are you know now you know how to install a plugin also okay so in the sub prod environments if you go to the organization in the sub prod environments okay so we, we will install plugins like this we will install plugins like this in a production environment in a production environment so if it is a paid plugin here you can see major incident management is a paid plugin you have seen here paid yes or no yes sir okay it is a paid plugin you can't install the, this paid plugins uh, in the production environments if it is a sub prod environment it's okay if you want to install paid plugins within the production environment you have to communicate with service no company by using high ticket and you have to get quote, uh, quotation for major incident management like uh, for amount to related okay how they are charging for uh, this plugin and all you have to bring these details you have to confirm with your customer or your project coordinator and if they are okay and if you get subscription for this plugin from the service now company then you can install uh, this plugin in the production environment otherwise you don't install okay got it everybody if it is a free plugin we have some free plugins also there okay if it is a free plugin we can able to install no problem if it is a free plugin got it everybody so activation of this plugin will take some time activation of this plugin will take some time okay and next so some plugins we have to up update so here you can see if we go to the incident management here it is asking for update almost three updates we have sr no okay for some plugins it will ask for the updates for some up some plugins it will ask for the updates yes you can able to uh, update the plugins okay you can update or install if you don't have and we have another way to install the plugins within our personal developer instances okay we already discussed i hope okay that is by navigating to the developer service now.com by navigating to the developer service now.com so there we have activate plugin there we have we'll find the activate plugin one minute it's loading wait so service now trying 2019 next sign in so from here also we can able to activate the plugin from developer.servicenow.com this is only for personal developer instances okay from the developer account you can click on this uh, profile so activate plugin you can click on activate plugin okay so whatever the plugin you want to activate yes you can activate from here for example here you can see i'm saying major no that so guys that means whatever the plugins which is not available from here whatever the plugins which is not available from here it will available here okay so for example okay major instant already installed i hope uh, maybe wait wait risk assessment worried wait risk no so maybe orchestration or discovery discovery this is itom related plugins you can see so if you want to activate from here yes we can able to activate discovery plugin okay so for example yes our plugin is successfully installed okay i'm i'm closing this form i'm closing this form you can come to home page and you can refresh now major instant management related uh, changes will you can see here within the instant application okay wait it's loading uh, meanwhile i will close this developer account yes now you can type something called major so uh, when you type major in the filter uh, filter navigation search application navigation search you haven't found anything now you can see major incident management related things are appearing here after installation of plugin everybody got it yes or no yes for example here you can see from here we can see discovery plugin discovery yes you can see so discovery dis -er. yes from here you, you can able to see discovery plugins also mid server okay whatever the plugins you want you can you can install from here okay 
yes this is about plugins so here i completed plugins also guys so tomorrow also i'm taking class i already informed in the mo today's morning right so tomorrow also i will take the class because of i think on wednesday we have festival ugadi festival okay on that day i will give the leave 22 or 23 i think 22 right 22nd 22nd yes on 22nd we do we have holiday on behalf of ugadi festival that class i will take tomorrow okay tomorrow we have class and in tomorrow class we are going to discuss about lookup rules templates metrics flow designer if we have time uh, if we have time we'll also go with the process flow interceptor okay these things we are going to discuss okay guys got it okay anji anji yes please in data source we didn't discuss about jdbc and oidc yeah so actually i don't have jdbc or oidc uh, connect connectivity details so if we have any uh, connect those uh, servers connectivity details so please uh, come up with those details we will i will connect uh, within the class and i will show you how it is okay as of now we don't require we don't require those okay okay yeah. yeah so i haven't explained those because of i don't have those details so okay. for that we we require some real time server details right for jdbc and oidc ui policy yeah data yeah policy. yes ui policies data policies is completed yeah okay guys thank you all thank you so much for attending the class uh, even in the evening timings Okay, I'm so sorry for taking leave uh, in the morning. So suddenly I have planned for going to the hospital for my kid. Okay, so that's what I, wa I was taking yes, leave and uh, I was compensated that class now. Okay, tomorrow we have class. So we are going to discuss about lookup rules, uh, templates, metrics, process flows and interceptors. Okay, thank you all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes, whoever yeah he is good now okay, okay. yeah I, to, in today i'm not taking any attendance attendance here okay so tomorrow also we have class please attend so whoever watching this video so whoever not attended today class at least please watch this video okay thank you all and bye bye bye